greetings all. 30 years for a day, and this is quite an accomplishment as we, have co as we can imagine. Um, and the accomplishment is really, I think, multifarious. It takes on a number of forms in substance, in process, in uh, the way we've uh, been organized, uh, the relationships, the relationships. Um, as you know, as we all know, Adea began as a donors club uh, in order to uh, promote coordination amongst donors. This came out of the World Bank's 1988 uh, paper on or book on um, education in sub-Saharan uh, Africa, policies for adjustment, revitalization, and uh, expansion. But somehow or other, it morphed into where they became a true partnership. How did that happen? I think that's what's really most uh, remarkable about Adea. First of all, we have to realize that the relationships between donors, so-called donors, and the countries, uh, these relationships are inherently imbalanced. Um, Adea began to realize that as soon as it became much more of a partnership and much less of a, of a restricted donors club, um, and uh, work towards promoting open, frank, informal dialogue between its uh, two main constituencies. The two main constituencies being, of course, ministers of education and, the, uh, and their financing partners, mainly their financing partners, technical also. Uh, a third constituency is the research community, people working on education in, uh, in Africa. Uh, so here we have Adea moving into uncharted territory. Uh, there was actually, there's only one other vaguely similar organization that uh, was in this territory. It concerned uh, water, uh, hydraulic resources, and it was based in Stockholm. And I discovered it uh, when I was thinking about how Adea operated and uh, it helped me understand the nature of the uh, informality both in terms of the structure and in terms of the relationships uh, between the different uh, members. Uh, and Adea moved forward without, with, a, with vision, uh, with activities, with budget, um, but not much of a strategic plan, to tell you the truth. Uh, but with continual looking, reflective you know, um, introspection, thinking about what, what it is we were doing, how we were doing it, and why it was working, because it was working. Um, and uh, it, because it was working, Adea began to have a number of, it became clear that Adea's adva comparative advantages were, uh, were strong. For one, its agenda was determined collectively uh, by its double constituency that I just mentioned. Uh, secondly, uh, Adea became the one place for building social capital between education ministries and development agencies and researchers. Uh, and this was the result of increasing levels of trust uh, and openness within, within Adea, within the association. Uh, maybe most importantly, Adea had the capability, has the capability of undertaking exploratory endeavors that nobody else would undertake, no financing agency would undertake it. Uh, and uh, being cross country, of course, it wasn't within the purview of a ministry of education. These exploratory endeavors included studies, uh, dialogues, meetings, programs, uh, and we would see where they lead. Let me give you a few uh, examples of this. Um, from my time at Adea, I think the most important uh, biennial that I organized was the 1999 one in Johannesburg, which was based upon what works. We were, we, Adea explored uh, with no guarantee of success. Adea explored what was working. It was a positive exploration. Um, and um, it was at the conclusion of that meeting that uh, Mamadou and Doy, summing the whole thing up, um, you summarized it as an, a fine example of the praxis approach, which has subsequently been uh, been very much present within Adea's uh, work. 
Um, a second example of ex exploratory endeavors would be what led to the Communications for Education program, uh, which was initiated by the DEA Secretariat and became a working group and became the uh, prize for education communication in Africa. Um, a third would be the organization of a dedicated commission for educational research at an international meeting held in, in Johannesburg in the Cape Town, South Africa, comparative and international education societies. Another would be a half day meeting between the, minister, the 10 uh, ministers and the minister's bureau and then World Bank President James Wolfenson. Uh, well, my five minutes are up here, so I'll stop there, but there's so much more we can say about it there. Um, a day which is really a, um, uh, a carrefour, a meeting, a, a crossroads between the two major, it's two major constituencies, the uh, financing and technical partners and the ministries of education. Uh, and, it, and if there's one word that comes to my mind concerning Adea, it's enabling. Adea has enabled uh, true partnerships between these two. And indeed, it's probably not insignificant that the major donor now to uh, for, for education uh, in Africa is the global partnership for education. They and they emphasize partnership. I think that they have maybe had something to do with that. So congratulations to it, Dea. Congratulations to us all, I guess, for having contributed to it and have a very good meeting. Thank you for asking me to uh, contribute. Bye bye.